give you their statements. Once they have finished their statements, because of other commitments, they will leave, but Dr. Bruce Aylward will stay behind and answer your questions. Thank you very much. Over to Dr. Chan. Thank you, Gregory. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, and good morning to colleagues uh, from the media. Um, I convened an emergency committee under the international health regulations to gather advice on the severity of the health threat associated with the continuing spread of Zika virus disease in Latin America and the Caribbean. The committee met today by teleconference in assessing the level of threat the 18 experts and advisors looked in particular at the strong association in time and in space between infection with the Zika virus and a rise in detected cases of congenital malformations and neurological complications. The experts agree that a causal relationship between the Zika infection during pregnancy and microcephaly is strongly suspected, though not yet scientifically proven. All agree on the urgent need to coordinate international efforts to investigate and understand this relationship better. The expert also consider patterns of recent spread and the broad geographical distribution of mosquito species that can transmit the virus. The lack of vaccines and rapid and reliable diagnostic tests and the absence of population immunity in newly affected countries were cited as further cases further causes for concern. After a review of the evidence, the committee advised that the clusters of microcephaly and other neurological complications constitute an extraordinary event and a public health threat to other parts of the world. In their view, a coordinated international response is needed to minimize the threat in affected countries and reduce the risk of further international spread. Members of the committee agree that the situation meets the conditions for a public health emergency of international concern. I have accepted this advice. I am now declaring that the recent cluster of microcephaly and other neurological abnormalities reported in Latin America following a similar cluster of French Polynesia in 2014, constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. As a precautionary measure, and because of the association, a coordinated international response is needed to improve surveillance, the detection of infections, congenital malformations, the detection of uh, and neurological complications to intensify the control of mosquito populations and to expedite the development of diagnostic tests and vaccines to protect people at risk, especially during pregnancy. The committee found no public health justification for restrictions on travel or trade to prevent the spread of Zika virus. At present, the most important protective measures are the control of mosquito populations and the prevention of mosquito bites in at-risk individuals, especially pregnant women. So thank you for that. And uh, now let me invite the chair of the emergency committee, uh, Professor David Heyman, uh, to continue. Thanks very much, Director General. Um, the committee had a very interesting discussion this afternoon because we had very good input from countries that are affected with Zika outbreaks and also with these clusters of microcephaly and disorders and neurological disorders, and also had an, a very good group of advisors who advised on questions that were asked. And it was a very difficult decision to discern between what is a public health emergency of international concern and what should be precautionary measures because of possible relation between Zika and these clusters. But in the end, as the Director General said, the fake was called, the Public Health Emergency of International Concern was called regarding the clusters of 
microcephaly and neurological disorders, and there were two major recommendations. These were surveillance for microcephaly and other neurological disorders needs to be standardized and particularly in areas where Zika virus transmission is occurring. And at the same time, there needed to be intensified research of new clusters of microcephaly and neurological disorders and to determine in case control and other study methodologies whether there is a causative link to Zika virus and other factors. So those were, that is the fake. The fake is, has to do with proving that these clusters are or are not linked to the Zika virus. But as the Director General said, there were a whole series of precautionary measures that were made because there is an association in time and place and possibly that association will be proven. And when it's proven, we want to be sure that those measures have been taken that will, if it is proven, um, have been beneficial. And they therefore involve a whole series of other recommendations which are just good, plain public health practice. Measures regarding vector control, regarding surveillance, and then long-term measures which would regard such things as making sure that there are discussions going on about the possibility of providing uh, research and development for vi vaccines and for other uh, types of goods which would be necessary to control Zika virus should it shown to be a causative factor for these links. So it was a very um, um, uh, concise meeting, um, made very easy for the chair because of an excellent expert committee, but in addition because of the experts who were in the room who were advising, and also by very clear country presentations. So I would just um, say that I'm grateful that the Director General has accepted the recommendations of the committee in their entirety, and um, believe that this is a real important way forward to determine what is the link and what's going on in uh, Latin America and other countries where Zika virus is occurring. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hayden. Dr. Chan, are you? You want me to leave? <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Now or never. <laughs> you know, I, I think David has a, f uh, a flight to catch, and I have other commitment, but, you know, it is important to answer a few questions. Okay, Jamil Shade, thank you very much. Uh, from Brazil. Uh, my question is precisely on Zika. So Zika virus has not been declared an emergency per se, the Zika virus itself. It is the cluster that was declared. Am I correct? Just, just a clarification. And secondly, as far as we know, microcephaly is only being registered in Brazil. So how can it be a global um, alert, basically, on something that is only happening in Brazil? Thank you. Well, as you said, quite rightly put it, you know, uh, the experts have, you know, very detailed discussion and uh, whether or not, you know, uh, the fake should be declared solely on the uh, clusters of microcephaly and other neurological uh, abnormalities, or it has to be linked uh, to the uh, Zika virus uh, uh, infections. Um, the, uh, the opinions of the experts is that even the clusters of uh, microcephaly alone is sufficient to declare a fake because of its heavy burden on parents, on mothers, and on the community and society. There is urgent need to do a lot more work and establish whether or not there is a definitive association between the Zika virus uh, infection. But having said that, uh, the information presented by the countries present, uh, you know, including Brazil, U.S., El Salvador, uh, and also uh, France, uh, representing the uh, uh, um, areas and territories uh, in Polynesia. Uh, the evidence is growing and it's getting strong. And so uh, I accept it. Even on the, um, uh, on the microcephaly alone, it is sufficient to call a fix so that the, we need coordinated international response uh, to make sure that we get to the bottom of this. But of course, of course, uh, you know, the uh, mosquito uh, that spread the um, Zika virus is ambiguous in so many countries. And countries that are experiencing dengue, yellow fever, as well as chikungunya, uh, it is incumbent upon us also to work with those countries who are reporting outbreaks already to pay attention 
and then to follow whether closely, uh, of course, the public health people and the clinical uh, uh, experts, doctors, uh, either in uh, primary health care or in hospitals, to, to make a very important linkage to be on the alert uh, for uh, you know, unusual events. So uh, there are two meanings to me. Uh, first and foremost, the fake concern about microcephaly and the heavy burden on families, on women, and so on. But um, you know, taking precautionary measures to introduce uh, the whole host of measures can reduce the risk. Uh, even the even the um, the science and the linkage between Zika and microcephaly is established. Can you imagine if we do not uh, do all this work now? and wait until the uh, scientific evidence comes out, then people will say that, why don't you take action? Because the, the mosquito is ubiquitous. Many measures, preventive measures, like vector control and uh, appropriate personal uh, 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 protection, like uh, avoidance uh, by mosquito bites, those are simple, effective measures that uh, we should be taking. And it is also good for other public health uh, uh, conditions like uh, dengue and others. Thank you very much, Mr. Robertson, CNN. How long do your experts believe it may take to establish, if it exists, a causal link between Zika and microcephaly? I ask the same question, and of course, <clears throat> uh, as you well know, <coughs> USA is uh, working very closely with Brazil and other countries. Who, who are uh, uh, willing to collaborate to do case control studies and other studies to establish uh, the causal relationship. And we all know that uh, some of these studies may take longer, but you know, uh, the good thing is these studies will start in, in the next two weeks. David, you want to supplement that question? How long would the experts uh, yeah. be able to find the uh, causal relationship or otherwise? I think it's not known how long it will take, but it's a very complicated issue. To begin with, microcephaly is a, a rare event that occurs. And so what it means is finding the cases and then comparing them to a series of controls who don't have microcephaly and try to get mos mosquito exposure and data and looking also at data as regards Zika infection in the mother. It's a very complicated study, and it's one that will take time. And I think it's a, uh, that's why these precautionary measures, as the Director General said, were so important. I just say that, that also that Brazil is not the only country with clusters of microcephaly. Polynesia had clusters in 2014, and that was reported also on the, on the conference. So it is, it is a, a spreading, it appears to be spreading. And the one last thing I would just say is that Zika alone would not be a public health emergency of international concern. Zika, as we know, as we understand it today, is not a clinically serious infection. It's an infection that occurs that is uh, like dengue and other infections which have not become public health emergencies of international concern. And it's only because of this association, if it's proven, that Zika could be considered as a public health event, emergency of international concern. So that's why it was a very difficult deliberation to separate the event from, from Zika itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we ask uh, one more question, maybe from Tulip Azunda, BBC? Given that you have um, established more of a causal link than there was before this meeting, are you going to change any of the advice specifically to pregnant women um, visiting these areas? And if I can, just a second one, which is this decision to declare an international public health emergency, how much was your response to the Ebola outbreak, which was, of course, criticized weighing on your mind when you took this decision? I think it is important to realize that, you know, when the evidence becomes first available, that, you know, of uh, such a serious uh, conditions like uh, microcephaly and other um, congenital abnormality, we need to take action and be, uh, you know, including precautionary measures. Now, uh, what was the first question? <laughs> Are you changing your advice to pregnant women now that you have more of a causal link than you have before? I think it is important to understand that you know uh, there are several measures that pregnant women can take, and uh, yes, if you can 
uh, delay travel. I mean, and it does not affect your 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 uh, other family commitments or others. Uh, if which is it is something that they can consider. But if indeed they need to travel, they can get uh, advice from their physicians as well as to take uh, uh, personal protective uh, measures like, for example, wearing long sleeve and then uh, uh, shirts and also pants and use uh, a safe um, uh, water uh, mosquito repellent, sorry, uh, mosquito repellent.